Hello and welcome to Channel 17's Town Meeting Television and another live candidate forum. I'm Matt Kelly, your host. Uh, thank you to all our viewers enjoying uh, our live stream at ch17.tv. Joining us this afternoon for a live conversation is Martin Lalonde. He is running unopposed for Chittenden County State Representative District 7-1. This is the district that serves South Burlington. Martin, it's a pleasure having you on the show today. Thank you for coming in. Uh, we have we have uh, uh, plenty of time for a wide-ranging conversation here as you are running unopposed. So uh, we'll ask you for an opening statement and then we'll get right into our conversation. Excellent. Thank you very much. Uh, yes, so uh, i am represented uh, Chittenden District 7-1 uh, for uh, the last four years, so two terms. I'm running for my third term. Uh, it is in, uh, unopposed. Um, my, my background is <clears throat> that I, I am a lawyer by training and, and I practice law in Washington, D.C. Uh, for 13 uh, years uh, before we moved up uh, to, to South Burlington, Vermont uh, about 11 years ago and I became the primary stay-at-home parent, became very involved in, in uh, the kids' schools mm -hmm. and then ended up getting on the school board uh, where I've served for eight and a half years. Uh, my term is up in, in March, and I'm probably going to be running it again. Um, so I will, you know, I, I've looked at uh, doing public service and, and uh, being on various boards. Uh, I was on the Suzuki, uh, Vermont Suzuki Violin Board for a while, uh, the Vermont School Board Association Board. I'm currently on the Vermont Watercolor Society Board. Uh, so I've been involved in that respect, but uh, f about four and a half years ago, the representative who had been the representative uh, for South Burlington, one of the four representatives, uh, reached out to me to see if uh, I would run, and it sounded like a great opportunity to use my legal background mm -hmm. and to get even more involved in, in issues. So, so that's why I, I uh, initially ran. Uh, I've been on the Judiciary Committee for the last four years. Uh, I've found it very engaging. I think we've been doing very important work uh, and the primary reason I'm running is to continue that work. Uh, I hope to be back on the Judiciary Committee, uh, but there are other issues that are very important to me as well. Uh, environmental issues are, that, that's in fact the area that I was working at the Department of Justice was in the Environment, uh, environment Division. Um, and, and education issues certainly, and there are several others. You know, the concern for making sure Vermont is a viable place, uh, is uh, has revenue growth at the same, same time that we're watching uh, the interests of our working families. So in any event, that's, that's why I'm running again, to continue that, continue that work and continue to, uh, to, to really work on the issues important to South Burlington and the rest of Vermont as well. Very good. Uh, lots in there, um, and I'm excited because we're going to be able to talk about uh, a number of judiciary issues, which covers equity, it covers education, right. criminal justice reform. It actually even includes, you know, the legalization of marijuana and uh, the uh, commuting of sentences and things like that and right. what that might entail. Um, but before we get to that, uh, I want to ask you, you are running again unopposed. Right. Uh, uh, for Chittenden 7-1. Now, uh, I had asked uh, some earlier uh, state representatives who are also running unopposed this year, and the question is, is this uh, a situation where voters are, are quite satisfied with your uh, uh, tenancy, if you will, as, uh, as a state representative, or is it more a case of uh, candidate apathy or candidate intimidation right, or combination right. of all right. Well, I don't think it's. Uh, I don't think I'm very intimidating, so I don't think I don't think that's the that's the uh, issue. Um, I do believe I, I, despite the fact that I've uh, run unopposed, this is my third time running for legislature unopposed. Uh, I do go out and knock on doors and and talk to constituents. Uh, Whenever I'm in town on uh, Saturday, I have uh, meetings at a local restaurant, either Panera or the Starving Artist on Shelburne Road, which are in, in my district, mm -hmm. uh, and I advertise that on Front Porch Forum. Uh, we, during the session, South Burlington reps have a, a monthly get-together open to the public in the library. And my point being that despite not being opposed, I'm out there trying mm -hmm. to make sure I, you know, the constituents know who is representing them. Uh, and who they can go to if they have issues, and also talking to them about what the issues are. 
and and they there certainly are are concerns but i think i think what i represent and what i i am pushing in the legislature uh, is what my constituents want me to be doing uh, they for instance the environmental issues mm. uh, for instance the gun uh, safety issues mm. uh, some of the stuff I'm doing on the Judiciary Committee I, I think I'm pretty well aligned mm -hmm. with the the large majority of, of the individuals uh, in in my district so that that's one aspect so mm -hmm. I, I think there is some satisfaction at least I, I like to hope so okay. and and because I'm so available I don't have an overwhelming number of people yelling at me that things are and, going and I guess, terribly. You know, the question is more is it a, a, a question of candidate apathy? Right. I mean we're seeing a lot of Democrats running unopposed this year. Yeah that's yeah that's that's true and, and I think uh, knowing a lot of those candidates we I think the Democrats do have a lot of very quality candidates running a, as well um, but it is difficult to run. Mm. It is difficult to have this as a job. That's another problem. Mm. It's a citizen legislature. Uh, it is five to six months, uh, hopefully usually five, four to five, but it just seems lately we've been running a little later. Mm. Uh, the pay is not very good. There are no benefits. Mm. There's no staff. It's, it's a difficult job. I'm not complaining because I very much enjoy it. I think mm. it's very important work, mm. but there's only so many people who can actually do it. You have to have uh, a spouse who is the, the main breadwinner, which I, I am fortunate enough, or you have to have a job that's very flexible, or many people are retired or, uh, are on there. It's really tough to hold a regular job and also do this, but it's also really tough to just do this and because, feel you can make a living. Right, because here in the state of Vermont, we're not looking to hire professional legislators here. We're a part-time citizen legislature. Exactly, exactly. And it's and it's closer to full time for at right. least five months. Mm -hmm. uh, so, so it's that combination, and, and I think that I think that Vermont is lucky that we're able to get the number of people running for these seats that we are. Yeah. I wish we could because I think in a democracy the idea is that you want to have people running uh, for the seats. You want to have choices for individuals, um, but I don't take for granted that I don't have opposition and that means I can just coast right. I feel that I'm representing these individuals they're putting their trust in me and so I have to make sure that I'm talking to them let's move on to yes. some other of the questions here uh, and it particularly relates to criminal justice criminal justice reform uh, equity being one of them right. Um, right. what is the state of Vermont and what are you doing uh, to dismantle the systemic and institutional racism that really just persists here in the state of Vermont. Right, it's right. so hidden and and yet deep. Right, yes. So we, we certainly uh, have played a, a big role in that in uh, the Judiciary uh, Committee uh, and, and one of our leaders in, in really pushing those issues and helping us with those issues was Representative Kaya Morris mm. uh, out of Bennington who has uh, for various reasons including uh, the nasty internet uh, trolling that's been done and, and such uh, towards her. She, she's a, a I, I understand and I'm glad that you brought that up because I want to ask you about that statement about Vermont. What does that say right. about Vermont? Right. Uh, it, it says that we're not different than other states. Mm. That, that there is uh, there's even outright racism or there's if not that there's system, systemic racism mm -hmm. uh, people may not have an intent uh, that there's uh, outcomes that are adverse or, or different depending on one's race there may not be the intent there but there may be uh, either not having sufficient knowledge that these things happen uh, and, and there's there could be a, a lack of acceptance of diversity uh, and that is coming I think from some of the atmosphere that we see at the national level mm. and 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 people feel that it's okay to 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 be biased I guess mm. so so I think that because of those issues you know we have to recognize that Vermont is not different we're not a, so, a state so, that doesn't so, have these issues so what are we doing what right are so we doing and what are right. you doing sure there, there's only 
there are things being done, but you have to look at you can't, I think, necessarily change an individual's well, well, in a sense, we were points, we were sort of but, talking earlier. In a sense, yeah. you're involved in a lot of projects or initiatives, let's say, on the Judiciary Committee that right. in a sense actually literally come back to that right. issue. Right. Whether it's criminal right. justice reform, whether it's uh, commuting sentences for marijuana growers or, or people uh, convicted for those you know, right. misdemeanor offenses and things like that. Sure. Can you tie that all in sure. together sure. as to what so, is happening here with the state of Vermont right. to bring about equity? Sure, so, so I, I'll, I'll talk a little bit about criminal justice reform, but before I do, just on the, uh, other issue of dealing with diversity and, and racism and, and such. Uh, we, we passed a law in the special ses session, Act 9 it's called, uh, and, and that creates a position in the executive uh, branch, uh, in the administration, uh, to look at uh, issues such as, as systemic by a systemic racism in state government. Mm. You know, we, we can do that in state government. Mm. We can look at that and we can address that. We can come up with ways to address those kind of things going on there. Uh, we also, there, there was a, a bill that I believe it made it through the House and, and didn't quite get through past this uh, finish line uh, that would have had the Agency of Education working on updating certain curriculum to bring in more diversity, that, that there's parts of our history that are not being taught mm. and that they need to be taught. So there's an education piece in there as well. And, okay. and, and on my school board role, you know, we've, we've been looking very closely. We've had issues in South Burlington. We right. changed our moniker from the rebel's name because it was uh, caused discomfort for a lot of students. Uh, and, and its background, where, where that name came from, we changed that moniker. So, and we're also not just doing that, we're, we're offering more educational programming and, and diversity training for, uh, for our staff and teachers and such. So education helps as well, that's sure. another place to do it. So in the, in the justice, in the criminal justice area, uh, we're really, we are dealing with a couple things there and it's not, it's, it's not just uh, racial bias. I mean, there's certainly part of that, and we have fair and impartial policing uh, training that we passed a couple years ago uh, to make sure that you know, the law enforcement interactions are not uh, colored by the color of somebody's skin. And, uh, and if we can just even yeah. just expand on that a little bit in the criminal justice sphere, we're in the 21st century. There is absolutely no reason that any individual should die at the hands of law enforcement today. Right. There's no reason. There are restraint methods right. that can subdue an attacker right. without deadly force. Right, right. And, and that that is part of the train that is Critically, it's the training. I mean, it's the training that in, that police, that law enforcement is getting, uh, that has steered towards uh, where where individuals are being shot. <laughs> I mean, it's it, it's the training where we have more and more de-escalation type training. That's part of it, so that that you don't have are to get making, to that point. Are we making money available for body cameras? Uh, for yeah, there, there's, yeah, it, it, there, are, there is an uh, increase in, in uh, the use of body cameras is my understanding. Uh, that part's a little, it's dealt a little bit more in a different committee that I don't get into those details okay. quite as much. It's mm -hmm. government operations, but, but on, the, on the criminal justice reform, it's not just about that kind of equity. It really goes into also our issues with addiction right now, mm -hmm. with the opiate epidemic. And, and what we're doing, mental health it goes, it is, it issue. is, definitely, definitely. And again, it goes back to education too. Right, right, so, so really I look at the whole uh, spectrum of what we can do and we are working on these things. There's, there's trying to have individuals not be arrested as often, not mm -hmm. have to, uh, or not committing crimes. And that goes exactly to making sure our mental health system is, is fixed because it is broken right now. Uh, it is treating addiction as a as a health issue, not not as a criminal justice issue. It's trying to find, making sure there's treatment available for individuals. Uh, you know, there, ultimately, poverty and other societal things lead to individuals uh, committing crimes. That's a bigger uh, <laughs> task to try to deal with that. But but those are all things to try to reduce crime to begin with. Once there's a crime, that's kind of the next step, mm -hmm. is, is we'd like to find ways where there's an alternative route than incarceration. 
uh, incarcerating nonviolent criminals is, is not constructive. It costs us fifty to sixty thousand dollars a year to keep somebody in prison and they're perhaps only learning to be a better criminal unless we're doing the right things in prison, which is another thing. So, so we need to do stuff like having treatment courts uh, so that individual, this is a, it's a court that is is much more involved on a day-to-day -day basis with a, with an individual who has an addiction problem that led to the to the criminal activity, or perhaps it's even you know the possession of drugs that mm -hmm. is the criminal activity. But instead of trying to incarcerate the person, you try to treat the person, and you have a lot of restrictions in court supervision, probation officer supervision to make sure the individual is addressing the underlying problem, which is addiction. So, so that's the, kind of the next step. We also have restorative justice practices mm -hmm. that right. we, we're increasingly trying to find ways other than incarceration. So the next step is, all right, we have people that are incarcerated. There we need to uh, provide uh, medic medication-assisted uh, treatment, and that was a law we passed this year, but it's not quite going into effect as a as effectively as we'd like to see. Seven Days has been doing a great job of mm -hmm. initially reporting that story and, and following up. Uh, but, but we need to make sure that that's working and we need to try where we can to give individuals who are incarcerated uh, some skills that they don't recidivate, uh, be it high school uh, equivalent uh, education. Uh, there's also uh, UVM, separate from the state, uh, is offering some liberal arts courses, college level courses. What about in, trades? Yeah, and trades should be should be another thing which we don't have right now. But yeah. but these are things that we need to do. And then finally are the person I don't think I think a lot of our sentences are too long. Uh, I think uh, even for the, the violent criminal one has to really look at the situation uh, of what occurred, the age of the individual because you know those kind of uh, violent crimes disproportionately are, are committed and, uh, and victims are disproportionately uh, of the younger age and, and the brain development leads to individuals being out of that largely, not entirely, but, but having you know, a reduction in how long we're keeping people in prison is another thing. And once they get out of prison, helping that transition back into society, that means we have to do better with housing, which is a problem, and we have to try to do things to eliminate the collateral consequences. And that's We've done a lot of work on expungement, uh, which allows an individual to get rid of their record after a certain amount of time of essentially good behavior. So I know that's a lot, <laughs> but, but, but I mean, that, that's a big part of what I've been doing the last right. few years and will intend to do in, in, the, couple, uh, in the next couple years. Very good. That's not the only thing. Okay. But <laughs> well, we <laughs> thank a big you very part. much for your time here yeah, today. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, and also thank you for your service. It takes tremendous courage and strength to actually put your name on a ballot to uh, face your constituents, form your opinions, and then draw consensus in Montpelier. And we thank you for your time and your dedication. Uh, a reminder that you can visit our website at ch17.tv for a complete list of upcoming candidate forums here at Channel 17 Town Meeting Television. We invite you to visit that. Thank you for joining us. I'm Matt Kelly. For all of us at Channel 17, thank you for watching.